morning. It's a wonderful day. It's a wonderful day. And I appreciate you welcoming us into your living room. You're welcoming the Spirit of God into your home. So, your home is your sanctuary. Even though you're not joining us in the building, the Church of Harvest building, you still have a sanctuary, a place where the presence of God is manifested. And that's my prayer for each and every one who tunes in this morning that you will experience the presence of God, that you will hear the voice of God, that you will experience the power of God. Because God's Spirit is not hindered by distance. It can come in to right where you're at, whether you're in your bedroom, whether you're in your living room, wherever you are joining us today, Come on, the Spirit of God is resting in that place. And I'm praying for the glory of God to begin to fall. For the glory of God to begin to fall. If you've joined us today, and maybe this week has been challenging. Come on, I want to tell you, we've got some good news. We've got some good news. I don't care what all you hear on the radio or television. Come on, Jesus is still on the throne. And Jesus is still working miracles. Jesus is not hidden by what's going on in the earth. Huh? He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I want you to begin to open your heart up. No matter what challenges, whether you got some bad news, whether you feel like you're a little bit tired, you're weary of what's going on, come on, your strength is going to be renewed today. Come on, there's going to be a change of mind today by the power of the Spirit of God. Come on, we've got some wonderful things huh, prepared today. And so I want you to make sure you go if you haven't done it already. Because we're going to partake in communion. We're going to take communion together. And so if you don't have your elements, come on, begin to move towards it right now. Begin to get your juice. Begin to get your bread. And maybe if you don't have juice, if you don't have bread, you can find a substitute. Because you can bless it. And you're going to experience the power of God. Come on, I've got my great friend, part of our body, Apostle Dan Caldwell. He's going to minister to us today. Huh? There's a word that's stirring in his spirit. Huh? And God's going to use him to touch your life and to touch your situation. But we're going to begin our time this morning with Alma and Danilia. They're going to come to you in the place of song. And so wherever you're at, come on, it is the temple of God. And the Bible says the Lord is enthroned in the praises of his people. So I want to encourage you to lift your voice with us today. I want you to join in with us as we begin to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. When you begin to worship him, you are sending a clear message that you have aligned your hearts with him, you have aligned your spirits to him, but you are also sending a clear message to the earth that Jesus is Lord of all the earth. So right where you're at, come on, begin to stir up the spirit of God. Come on, wherever you're at, come on, begin to lean in a little bit. Whether you've joined us for the first time or you a regular person, you just meet with us on a regular basis. Come on, God has something special for you. And I want to tell you, he is stepping into your room. And when he steps in the room, everything changes. When he steps in the room, you can wipe 
for what he tears. When he steps in the room, he brings his glory with him. Come on, God is stepping into your room right now.
Come on. Right away you're at you saying, I give it all. I give it all. All that I am. All that I am. I give my heart to you. I give every burden to you. I give it all to you. I give it all to you. I'm making an exchange right now. I'm exchanging my burdens for your grace. And so, 
even in what the governor has said, he is also speaking to worship services. And he says that it, uh, worship services can begin after May 8th. And so, if you're part of the Church of the Harvest, we're going to be communicating with you this week. So I want you to make sure you stay current on your emails, that you will tune in to what's going on on Facebook. So we will let you know as a church body how we are progressing in this new season. All right? And so for me as the shepherd of this house, the thing that is extremely important to me is, is I want to care for you. I want to protect you, and I don't want to put you in harm's way. And so in every decision that we make concerning us coming back together as a congregation, those are the things that are the foundation of those decisions. It is we want to keep you safe, and we want to protect you. But at the same time, we want to embrace what God is doing, and we want to move forward. And so we will communicate with you. But I am glad that things are shifting. And I appreciate that you has, have stayed with us in this season. And in this moment right now, we want to wait on you for our tithes and offering. We're asking you to partner with us in the place of giving today. I want to tell you, Church of the Harvest is good ground. It's good soil. It's good soil. And don't become weary even in your giving. God has a blessing. I am telling you, I have experienced, I have experienced Jehovah Jireh. I have experienced the provision of the Lord. And that's my prayer for you. That's my prayer for you, that you will experience the provision of the Lord. And so there's something coming on your screen. And on that screen, it begins to show you multiple ways that you can give. And everything that you give, it is tax deductible. And so we keep a record and we will send you something at the end of the year. So you can give either through Cash App. You can give on our website, churchoftheharvest.us slash give. Or maybe you're going to mail in your, 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 your tithe and your offering. We'll be happy. We'll have somebody here to receive it. There is PayPal, and so we've got a variety of ways for you to give. And I want you to partner with us. But more than just to partner with us, I want you to experience the blessings of God because you've been faithful in your giving. The Lord has given us a promise that he will open the windows of heaven and he will pour out a blessing. Huh? That blessing could be that he'll have a, a new job for you. That blessing could be that he'll give you a creative idea. That blessing could be that he will give you some fresh connections, some new relationships. Whatever it is that you need, come on, as you're giving right now, I want you to bring your need before the Lord. And so, Father, you are looking at the hearts of your people. Lord, you know what it costs them to give. But you were the one, and we recognize you were the one who gave us the ability. And so we bring back to you. We bring the tithe before you. We bring our offering before you, O oh God. And we lay it before you. We lay it at your feet. And we lay hold of your promises. We lay hold that you are rebuking the devourer, that you are holding the thief at bay. You're bringing some fresh things in our lives. 
So we stand on your word. We stand on the promise that you came to give us life and that more abundantly. Well, listen, God is watching your giving and he is moving by his spirit. So it's good to be with you. And I am so glad to have my brother with me today. My brother, Apostle Dan Caldwell. He has been a friend who has walked with me through multiple situations. He has been a friend like a brother. That he has stood with me. He has sheltered me. He has spoken into my life. And that's the reason I'm bringing him before you. He has walked with God multiple years. And you're going to be receiving that overflow out of his life. The words you hear today, come on, I want you to know he's paid for it. He's paid for it with prayer. He's paid for it with sacrifice. He, pray, he paid for it with diligence. You're going to receive and it's going to bring a change into your life. So right where you're at, would you send something on the screen and would you say, I welcome you, Apostle Dan. Well, thank you, uh, Pastor Mike. And uh, honor to the Lord and to Pastor Mike and, and First Lady Kathy and all of our uh, Church of the Harvest family and friends. Great to have you with us this morning. I want to jump right into the Word of the Lord, and uh, I want to pick up and use the same same scripture that uh, Pastor Mike's been using in Isaiah 43 and verse 19. The scripture says, Behold, I do a new thing, now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? It will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Father, I pray now that you'd add your blessing to the reading of the Word. Give us a mind to receive, a heart to believe, an ear to hear, and a will to draw near. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pastor Mike's been teaching and preaching on this particular verse of Scripture. Last week he talked to us about the miracle on the Hudson. Y'all remember that? Uh, can we just take a, a, a fresh look at it today? And I mean with a new perspective. Not going to change the scripture, not going to change the context, just perspective. Everybody say perspective. Defying the word perspective means the art of drawing solid objects on a two-dimensional surface so as to give the right impression of their height, width, depth, position in relation to others uh, in a particular vantage point. I like this part of the definition. A picture drawn in perspective, especially one appearing to enlarge or extend the actual space and to give the effect of the distance and the view or the perspective. A particular attitude toward a way of regarding something, a point of view. So let me just say this. It is possible that you can have perspective and it not be the right perspective, but it's still your perspective. So let me uh, just read an article, and I posted this on my Facebook page uh, several days ago. But this is perspective. For a small amount of perspective at this moment, imagine that you were born in 1900. On your 14th birthday, World War I starts <laughs> and ends on your 18th birthday. 22 million people perish in that war. Later in the year, a Spanish flu epidemic hits the planet and runs until your 20th birthday. 50 million people die from, from it in those two years. Yes, 50 million. On your 29th birthday, the Great Depression begins. Unemployment hits 25% and the world GPD drops 27%. That runs until you're 33. The country nearly collapses. In the, in the world economy. When you're 39, World War II starts. You aren't even over the hill yet. <laughs> and don't try to catch your breath because there's more coming. 
On your 40, 41st birthday, the United States was fully pulled into World War II. Between your 39th and 45th birthday, 75 million people perish in the war. At 50, the Korean War starts. 55 million people perish. At 55, the Vietnam War begins and doesn't end for 20 years. Four million people perish in that conflict. On your 62nd birthday, you have the Cuban Missile Crisis, a tipping point in the Cold War. Life on your planet, as you know it, should have ended, but great leaders prevented that from happening. When you turn 75, the Vietnam War finally ends. Think of everyone on the planet born in 1900. How do you survive all of that? When you were a kid in 1985, didn't you think your 85-year-old grandparent understood how hard school was and how mean that kid was in your class? Yet they survived through everything that we just listed above. Perspective. <laughs> Let's try and keep things in proper perspective. Yes, we agree that we have not lived in a time like this, but let me give you some thoughts about perspective. Number one, life is filled with good and bad things. Bad things do happen to good people. Secondly, some of the good and some of the bad you cannot and do not control. It just is life. Number three, some of the good and the bad will find you no matter who you are or where you are. And then number four, when you have a positive attitude, the good and even the bad can and will become better. I know I'm looking for the better, aren't you? you? You can find good even in a bad situation, but you have to be looking for it. And then number five, if you have a negative attitude, the good and the bad will become worse. Nobody wants that, but your attitude dictates that. Choose, and this is number six, choose a positive Choose to remain positive no matter what happens. We say it all the time. We quote it all the time. This too shall pass. It's a choice that only you can make. And you decide many times when it passes because your attitude engages in a new level. Number seven, if you cultivate a consistent attitude of gratitude, it will influence your behavior. And really what we're talking about in this quote-unquote crisis or this pandemic is our attitude and our perspective. Thoughts become words and words become actions. What you're saying to yourself about this pandemic is perspective. <laughs> it is possible that the new thing Isaiah was writing about is the way that we see things. The way you see it is the way that you treat it. And how you view things is how you normally do things. Back in 2019, I had cataracts in both eyes and had to have cataract surgery. It was amazing to me that I didn't realize what I couldn't see until the correction had taken place. So moving into 2020, the year of vision, they corrected my vision, and when they corrected my vision, immediately after the surgery, before I ever left the surgery room, I was able to see better than I'd seen before. Now today... In both eyes, 2020, and I'm seeing colors and, and things and images that I didn't see before. They were there all the time, but it was my inability to see what was there until I had some correction, and it changed my perspective. You see, there's a major problem and a major difference in a problem versus a fact of life. A problem you may be able to fix or repair or even change in some way, but a fact of life is out of your control. You feel and think that you're in control and you want to be in control, but how many understand that much of what we do in our lives is not in our control? Learn to control what you can control. Control the controllables. Just because uh, this fact of life is, is a bad situation doesn't mean that it's all bad or that it all has to be bad. This can be a great learning experience, and this could actually be, I'm going to vaccinate some folks right now, this could actually be the new thing. What you're learning from this, 
What, 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 what's your perspective? What are you seeing? What is God trying to teach you and teach me during this time? What is he trying to make us aware of that we didn't see before? As Pastor Mike has said, these are unprecedented times. And while everyone is talking about the negative side, what are some of the positive side? What are you seeing? Well, let me give you a couple of examples. Now, I know no one, for the most part, likes new things, yet we live in a world where new things are planned. In fact, the computer industry is, operates by planned obsolescence. It intends for you to buy a new computer every three to five years. And so they're going to update, upgrade, and, and, and uh, up, upload different things into the system. And so you have to learn some new things if you're going to operate in today's world. New things require new thoughts. But here's the big one. It requires new ways. If God is bringing, and I do believe he's bringing a new thing, I believe he's releasing it on the earth, and it's going to not only require new thoughts, but it's going to require us to do some things differently than we've done up till now. You, 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 what, what, let me just talk about this real quick. Because what we experience when something new happens, uh, several months back my wife wanted a new vehicle. I never knew that particular vehicle existed until she bought it, and then I seemed to see them everywhere. It wasn't that they weren't there. It was that I didn't notice them because my perspective had not positioned me to see those things. Could it be that God's moving in, the, in, a, in a dynamic spiritual realm and we can't see what God is doing because our perspective is not focused where God wants us to focus? You know, number one, excitement or maybe even fear of the unknown uh, will affect us when something new happens. All right? We can be excited about it, but we can also be fearful. Well, the, everyone knows the acrostic for fear, false evidence appearing real. And so here's what you need to know whenever you're experiencing fear when it should be excitement is that excitement will conquer your fear. I want to say that again. Excitement will help you conquer your fear. I'm excited about the future. I'm not fearful of what's ahead. I'm excited because I know who's in control. And because he's in control, I'm excited because I know what's coming is far better than what's behind me. And I know what's coming is much better than where we are right now. Secondly, it's a time of learning. When something new comes on the market, it's a time to learn. There, there's always been an upgrade, an up level. How many of you are, are ready for an upgrade, an up level? Whether you're ready for it or not, it's coming. Just get, yeah, be, it's coming. There is always something farther and more than what we have. Hmm. So here, here's what I want to say to you. When something new comes, there's always someone who knows more than you know, who's already experienced it, who's already been there, that can help you get to the new thing and help explain what, what, what makes it work and how it works and how it functions. Number three, change. Some of the old patterns no longer work. They no longer work. The operating system doesn't handle the thing the way that it used to handle it. It can't function that way anymore because things have been up-leveled. You need to get used to the idea that the up-leveling means that things have to change, and that includes me. Don't get overwhelmed by the improvements. Embrace the improvements because they're designed to make your life better. They're designed to make you better. They're not designed to make you bitter. They're designed to make you better. Number four, adjustments. I've used this statement for years, and I believe it to be true. Plan, prepare, and then adjust. We're living in the time of adjustment. We have to learn to adjust. As I've grown older and as I've matured, my physical being has changed. My, my mental capacities have changed. I've learned some things that I didn't know before. I can't do some of the things I used to do. I've just had to find a different way to do some of those things because my body doesn't function the way that it used to. So here's the fifth thing, embracing. Once you embrace the new thing, once you embrace the new technology, once you embrace what's coming down the road, it becomes normal. And we talk about the new normal. The new normal is change is coming. Change is here. And whether you like it or not, change is going to take place. You might as well embrace it and accept it because God is bringing a new thing. And it doesn't look like, act like, or respond the way the old thing did. Here are a couple of things I believe we should know. 
You didn't make this pandemic happen. And you can't control it. But you can control the controllables. You can control how you respond to it. And please, this is just Dan, but we need to stop trying to control everybody else around us and trying to get them to follow the rules and start controlling us. You can't become angry with them or disappointed with them or otherwise. Just trust God and let God take care of that part. You take care of what you can take care of and leave the rest up to Him. Number two, your historical experiences set a precedent for this unprecedented time that Pastor Mike's been talking about. Anybody ever had an experience with God? I mean a healing, maybe a miracle, perhaps a financial blessing, perhaps a job, perhaps an addition to the family when the doctor said it was impossible. See, if you have some history and you have some experiences, there is a precedent that has been set for future experiences. It may be unprecedented at this point, but what lies ahead is, has a foundation on what was behind and what God has already done in your life. What is it that we've learned from our journey? We're able, whatever it is we've learned, we're able to bring it with us into this time, into this new season, into this new time. And your history will let you know what to expect. I don't know about you, but I found him faithful, haven't you? All the way, every time, every day, faithful. When I was a younger man back in the 60s and 70s, this song was a great song that, that was written, and it was, it was on the music charts. But the song was entitled, Through It All. It was written by Andre Crouch. And it said, and I just want to read some of the words to you. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There's been times I didn't know right from wrong. Does that sound anything like where we are today? Maybe just a little bit. <laughs> but in every situation, I like that part. In every situation, God gave me blessed consolation that my trials come to only make me strong. And then the course goes into through it all, through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God through it all, through it all. I've learned to depend upon his word. The second verse says, in, I've been lots of places and I've seen lots of faces. There's been times I've felt so all alone. But in those lonely hours, yes, those precious lonely hours, Jesus lets me know that I'm his own. No matter what's going on around us, no matter what's happening to us, just know that we are his own. And the course resounds again through it all, through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God through it all, through it all. I've learned to depend upon his word. I particularly like the third verse of this song. I thank God for the mountains. And I thank him for the valleys. I thank him for the storms that he brought me through. I'm talking about perspective here. For if I never had a problem, I would never know that my God and your God could solve them. I'd never know what faith in God could do through it all. Through it all, we have perspective. You know, you can't depend on the government. You can't depend on the doctors. You can't depend on your job. You can't depend on countless other things that you may already believe in. But you can depend on Him. He's been there every time. Through it all. But have you lived long enough? No matter what's happened to you, have you lived long enough to know with an assurance that you can depend on God. I want to suggest that you keep and you make a record of what you're learning for future generations. I used to visit my grandmother when I was just a boy, and I loved to hear her talk about the good old days. And I'd go to Grandma's house, and I'd say, Grandma, tell me about the good old days. Now, she was a, a, a saint of God that was raised in the church, and so she talked about the good old days of how they went to church and how they walked for miles and how they stayed up all night long and went to work the next day. She talked about the miracles and all the things that happened. It was through it all and, and those explanations of what grandma said that began to stir something inside of me and became the foundation and the bedrock of my faith. Make a record and share it with the future generations. You see, when the children of Israel left Egypt, they had been in bondage for over 400 years, yet when they were freed and they left, they left complaining for the new thing 
and about the new thing because it wasn't like the old thing. And the problem was they had settled where they were. Before the pandemic, just a question, did you settle? And so the pandemic has upset you. It's upset your apple cart. It's upset things the way that, that you feel are normal. Did you take your health, your family, your job, your faith? Did you take those things for granted? Well, was there always this thing out there that could have happened? You see, the generation of the Israelites that left Egypt had never known anything but slavery. So there was something they had to learn. Another generation perished because the next generation didn't learn. I hope you heard what I said. Number four, everything, absolutely everything. Can I say it again? Everything is going to change. The scripture said, behold, I, 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 I will do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Don't look for life to return to what we had referred to as normal because it will not. And it will be a disappointment to you if you're still living in the bondage of what was normal. What you've learned from the past you're now, and I, I want everybody to hear me clearly, what you've learned from the past, you're now able to bring with you into your future. All the lessons, all, all the things that God has done for you, they're not dismissed, they're not gone. You can carry them with you into this new day, into this new season, and they become a foundation, they become a, a, a fortifier, they become a part of encouraging you and strengthening you and letting you know that God has been with you through it all. I'm still talking about perspective. I know that I've lived long enough that I've experienced a lot of things. Pastor Mike alluded to it as he made such a gracious introduction. But I remember having lived, and, and I have some great takeaways. I remember living from week to week and from paycheck to paycheck. I remember not having a job, and I remember having a job. I remember robbing the kids' penny banks so I could get gas to go preach somewhere. I remember my wife tearing the back seat of the car out and looking for some spare change so we could go to the grocery store. I remember getting in the food line and, and, and in what was called government surplus. I remember all of those things, but I, that remembrance and, and thinking about that just reminds me how faithful our God is, how faithful he's been through the years. As you see, my perspective is neither height nor depth nor principality nor power or any spiritual wickedness in high places is going to separate me from the love of God. Though tomorrow may never come for me, this is what I know. I still believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him and that he's able to do that which I've committed unto his hand. Don't give up. Get up. Don't surrender. Survive. Don't back down. Step up. Don't surrender to what's going on around you and don't allow the, the, the crisis that's being uh, propelled. And, and, and please, we, things may be opening back up and things may be looking brighter, but here's what I want you to know. What's looking brighter is only brighter when God's in it. What's looking brighter is only brighter whenever God's in control of it. So open up and let God do what he wants to do in you, through you. Here's the other side. For you in this time of pandemic. He's brought me this far by faith. By faith. Depending on the Lord. In the midst of a crisis, he is my strong tower. He's your strong tower. He wants to be your fortress. He wants to be your help. He wants to be your reinforcer. You see, perspective lets me know that the best is still yet to come. I want to say this as I kind of wrap some things up. I believe without a doubt that my God can take your grave and turn it into a garden. He can take what's dying or has died 
and some things that have died in you in hopes and dreams or even perhaps visions and aspirations. He can take what has died or you think is dead and turn it into a garden that produces new life. You see, you put the seed in the ground. And the seed, everything that the seed needs to reproduce is already in the seed, but it has to die in the earth before it can bring forth new life. He can take your graveyard and make it a garden and make it more beautiful than it's ever been before. But it's about perspective. What's your perspective? What does it look like? I pray right now that this word has been an encouragement to you and that you'll embrace it and take a step up and take a step out and embrace your best day, which is yet ahead. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, I am convinced that Dan has heard from the Lord and he has delivered the word of the Lord. And God's word, it will accomplish its purposes. But I want to pick up on the last thing that Dan said. Embrace it. Come on, embrace it. There's a difference with my wife just laying next to me when we go to bed. It's a whole nother thing when I begin to embrace her. I pull her in. I put my arms around her. She gets close to me. I can feel her heart. I can feel the beating of her heart. When you begin to embrace the word of God, it is embracing Jesus. You'll begin to get his heart beat. Come on, don't give up, but get up. Because through it all, God has been faithful. We're going to shift into our time of communion. So I want you to gather your, your elements As I was meditating on our time today, and I want you to make sure you stay with us because when we come out of this time of communion, we're going to pray. We're going to pray about the word of the Lord that came through Apostle Dan. We're going to pray, and God's going to move. We're going to pray, and something's going to begin to change. When we pray, eyes are going to be open and hearts are going to be assured. Jesus told us we can do this in, his rem in remembrance of him as often as we will. And I am convinced in this season, communion becomes critical. I want you to hear me. Critical. Something happens in the place of communion. Something happens even when you are preparing the elements. You begin to think about the sacrifice that was made for you. When you begin to partake of it, you begin to remember the price that was paid for your salvation, the price that was paid for your redemption. Come on, as we're about to partake, I want you to allow your mind to go to those places. I have been so aware that the blood, it has a voice. The blood of Jesus, it speaks. In Hebrews chapter 12, 
he begins to say that the blood of Jesus, it speaks better things. There is life in the blood. That's what the Bible says. I want you to even take it into the natural. When you go to the doctor's office, usually at some point in time, they begin to take blood. Huh? Because they can tell so much about you by just looking at your blood. Your blood speaks. Your blood has a voice. I don't know if you like any of those shows that deal with forensics. And all they've got to do is get a drop of your blood. And it begins to talk to them. A drop of your blood. It begins to reveal who you are. The blood has a voice. And so in the book of Genesis, the first shedding of human blood, it was done from what Cain did to his brother Abel. And God begins to say, I hear Abel's blood crying out to me. The blood has a voice. But Hebrews talks about the blood of Jesus has a voice. And Abel's voice, uh, Abel's blood cried, vengeance. Avenge me, O oh God. But Jesus' blood cries forgiveness. Jesus' blood cries and it speaks grace. Huh? Jesus' blood causes the adversary to pass over. Jesus' blood, it speaks of healing. That's the reason they beat him. And his blood now speaks on your behalf. His blood speaks of protection. His blood speaks of cleansing. And his blood gives us access to the throne of God. Come on, would you, would you grab your bread? And whatever you're using for bread today, we bless it now. We bless the bread. And we recognize your body was, was broken for us to be made whole. And so as we bless the bread, oh God, bring wholeness to your people. Anything that's been fragmented, put it back together. Father, even in this moment, we recognize Jesus as the Savior, but Jesus is also the carpenter, and he knows how to put things back together. Would you begin to put things back together? Come on, would you go on and eat of the bread? We bless the cup. The blood that was shed. The blood that's speaking on our behalf. Come on, if there's some kind of sickness that's in your body, when we get ready to partake, come on, would you begin to call for, for healing? If there's a place that you feel like you've missed it, maybe it's been a place that I haven't done what I knew God wanted me to do. There's been this place of sin in your life, missing the mark. Come on, just open your heart to the Spirit of God. Right where you're at, would you just begin to confess your fault? Would you begin to ask for forgiveness would you give them your life if, you've, if you haven't prayed the prayer of salvation today would you just say I give my life to you Jesus and so we bless the cup and we partake 
of the cup this morning in the name of Jesus. Come on, right where you're at, right where you're at. Come on, I want you to open your ears so you can hear the blood begins to speak. I want you to open your eyes because the enemy of your soul, he hears the blood speaking on your behalf. Come on, would you begin to speak to your body and would you begin to speak wholeness to your body and begin to speak healing to your body? Father, we stand on the blood. We cover Katrinka with the blood of Jesus. We declare healing and wholeness to her, oh God. Father, even now, we speak the blood over our nation, over our state, over the earth right now. Cause the death angel to pass over right now, oh God. Oh, no matter what situation someone is, no matter what stage of sickness they are in, we declare healing. We command death to pass over and let life be renewed as never before. We plead the blood over our minds that we will embrace the new thing, the fresh thing. We plead the blood over our bodies. We cover our bodies with the blood of Jesus that we will let go of the previous things and we will embrace the new things, oh God. We plead the blood right now over our perspectives that we will see like our God sees. We plead the blood over our homes. And we declare the blood of Jesus protects our children. The blood of Jesus protects our families. The blood of Jesus makes a stand against COVID-19. The blood of Jesus is greater than cancer. The blood of Jesus is greater than diabetes. The blood of Jesus is greater than any kind of heart condition. The blood of Jesus. Come on, would you begin to raise your voice right now and plead the blood right now. We seal this. We seal this. Are you hearing me, Yalima? Are you hearing me, Lakita? Are you hearing me, Chris? Are you hearing me, Mike and Jim and Donna? Can you hear me this morning? Come on, the anointed one is in your house right now and he's making all things new. He's got something better for us. He's got something better for us. Last of all, we speak the blood of Jesus to seal what God has been doing in our lives even today. The blood of Jesus. Come on, the wind of God is blowing. The wind of God is blowing. Come on, it's bringing fresh life. Come on, the wind of God is blowing. It's bringing fresh strength. The wind of God is blowing. Come on, would you say... I'm embracing the new thing. Come on, would you begin to prophesy you to yourself and say, I have God's perspective. I've got God's perspective. 
things are getting better and we're getting stronger. I want to tell you, you need to come back and play this back again. You need to pull out your notepad and the things that Apostle Dan has spoken. Come on, you need to meditate on them and let them get them deep in your spirit. Come on, if you're part of Church of the Harvest, we're going to be gathering again this Wednesday on our Zoom, our Zoom meeting. We'd love for you to join us. If you've been listening to us on Facebook Live, and you want to join us for our Wednesday gathering, come on, just send us something. Send it on office at churchoftheharvest.com. Dot us. Hmm. Our staff will grab that. They'll get you tuned in. Come on, because God's doing some wonderful things. Come on, I want you to enjoy the rest of your day. I want you to meditate on the things that you've heard and then begin to act on them. It's my joy to be with you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.